and welcome to Menopause Monday. So today I'm actually going to be talking about um, sleep and insomnia that tends to start during the menopause. Now, insomnia can become an issue when you have had sort of the lack of sleep and interrupted sleep over a certain period of time because it actually affects how you think about sleep, how you your internal thoughts are about sleep. So I'll cover that in a little bit at the end of this. But I just wanted you to understand this isn't just um, a sort of a avoid caffeine kind of uh, video. It's going to be very much about understanding why you might be struggling with sleep, giving you a few tips as to how to improve your sleep, but also get in sort of underneath the hood to help you set up healthier sleep patterns. So first and foremost, the reason we struggle with sleep difficulties when we are menopausal is the fact that our hormones are changing. Um, our estrogen is declining and so is our progesterone. And progesterone tends to decline faster than estrogen, which makes us estrogen dominant. And progesterone is one of the hormones that helps to calm us, helps to just feel better, feel a happier mood. When we're estrogen dominant, that's when we can feel more anxious. And as you probably well know, anxiety levels do increase as we go through the menopause. Also due to life changes, there's a lot that goes on through our middle years, empty nesting, changes in dynamics of relationships, um, sometimes look, you know, looking for a job that fulfills you rather than just pays the bills, all sorts of different things. And those are added stressors that just add to our burden as menopausal women. Um, but first and foremost, it is largely down to the changing in hormones. Now, if you were anything like me, I, through perimenopause specifically, not so much after the menopause, um, I would wake up literally drenched. And that was, you know, every, the sort of the seven to 10 days before a period would start. Thank goodness I am single because I would sleep on one side of the bed, get up, change my clothes and sleep on the, the other side of the bed and then just strip the bed off and wash it again the next day. Um, I know a lot of people really, really struggle with night sweats and they are no joke. What used to help me was keeping a flannel, a wet or cold flannel, a damp flannel next to the bed uh, with a few drops of lavender oil because lavender oil also helps to calm us down. Uh, it's relaxing and it just smells divine. Um, but just to put that around the back of my neck and to clean my face and on my wrist and on my arms. Um, to be honest, if I'd had a tub full of cold or cool lavender water, I'd have got in it. Uh, but that actually made a massive difference. It's incredible how just going around the back of your neck, chest and your arms and your face can cool you down really quickly. And just understand this is a, this is a transitionary time. So it will get better. Um, but we tend to sort of get stuck in our head of, of thinking, oh, I'm not going to sleep well again tonight. And we do shoot ourselves in the foot by doing that. Um, so one of those things you, you, you can, and, and also have, make sure your bedroom's reasonably cool so that if you are having a hot flush or a hot flash, you can chuck the covers off. Oh, just lie there and let the cold air wash over you. And that does help as well. Um, reducing things like dark chocolate, I think a square is okay before you go to bed, but you know, if you, if you like dark chocolate, try not to eat more than one square before bedtime. It's high in caffeine and that's going to disrupt your sleep. The same applies to caffeine and caffeinated drinks. So does tea also contains caffeine. Try and avoid those sorts of things. I mean, those are the obvious ones. And what I would suggest is if you want my top tips on setting yourself up for a good night's sleep that refers very much to sleep hygiene, um, send me a message or uh, click the link down below and I will uh, get that book across to you. It's really helpful and it will just cover all the strategies that you can be doing in order to set yourself up for a better night's sleep. They do work. You don't need to do them all, but um, you know, you'll know you you'll find there are a few in there that you can actually improve upon to help you get a better night's sleep. Um, it's also important to make sure that we are getting sufficient magnesium and potassium from our diet. They both help to calm us. Um, they'll, you know, they, they both have different roles in helping you go to sleep and then helping you stay asleep. The majority of ladies that I chat to, they can actually get off to sleep okay, but it's waking up in the early hours and they're not being able to go to sleep. And I'll give you a couple of strategies that have worked really, really well for me. And no matter how stressed I am, they, they just work. Um, so first and foremost, foods are like dark leafy greens for magnesium and, and also potassium. Um, magnesium also does contain, um, you get, sorry, magnesium from caffeine and chocolate, but avoid those 
because they are not beneficial for us. And things like cashew seeds and nuts are going to be good for you, pot potassium and magnesium, avocados particularly for potassium. Um, I'll put a list of foods down below just so that you, you know, sort of the top foods to be focusing on. But essentially, if you're having a healthy balanced diet and you're not eating or drinking too much processed stuff you're you should be fine you know they we do get them from the diet and um you know if you have a healthy balanced diet you should be getting sufficient magnesium and sufficient potassium uh, a, a, a decrease a sort of reduction in potassium or a depletion of potassium if you are waking up at night with cramp in your legs, that's a signal that it, you may need to boost up your potassium a little. And also restless leg syndrome, when you're you're feeling like you've, you've just got to move your legs in order to get comfortable because this feels like they're buzzing or they're humming. Um, that is also often linked to a low level of potassium. So if that's you, have a look at your potassium levels. It might need that you mean that you need to boost them a little bit. Another thing is melatonin. Melatonin is our sleepy hormone and serotonin, our feel good hormone, is a precursor to melatonin, which means if we've got low serotonin levels, we're also going to have low melatonin levels. Now, vitamin D and ultraviolet light is beneficial on so many different aspects of our health, our cardio health, helping us beat cancer or fight cancer cells, helping us just boost our immune system, our mental health, our, the health of our skin, our nails, our teeth. It's, it's just so, so vital. But it's also incredibly important in the production in helping you create ser serotonin to make you feel better. If you've got good healthy levels of serotonin, you're going to boost the amount of melatonin, your sleepy hormone that you're creating. So I, you know, even in the cold weather, wrap up warm and try and get outside for a minimum of 20 to 30 minutes every day. It is just so important that we have those the access to ultraviolet light. Um, if, it's, if you live in a really hot climate, just be careful that you don't get burnt and avoid in midday hours and all that kind of stuff um, but serotonin uv melatonin it's going to help you sleep better um, it's also going to help you just feel more relaxed um, so do focus on that and also exercise is really important it helps to boost our serotonin levels helps us to gobble up stress hormones so you know it's a multi-pronged approach it's not like turning on a healthy sleeping button and turning off a healthy sleeping button the more things that you can do to set yourself up for success, and and to be honest, they all they all apply to a healthy lifestyle. Um, but I want you to understand the importance of giving yourself a fighting chance by making sure that your your diet is sufficient for magnesium, potassium, and that you're also getting ultraviolet light. You're getting outdoors in order to boost your serotonin, which is then going to boost your melatonin. Now I'm going to move on to something called the sleep drive. The sleep drive is something we all have while we're awake during the day. We are filling up our sleep drive balloons. It's like a big helium balloon. And as we get through the day, our balloon's really, really full with sleep drive. And so we start to feel sleepy and then we go to bed and technically we should sleep well. If you are affecting your sleep drive by lying in weekends, maybe or on days off, particularly as we've all been in lockdown and, you know, work schedules have changed. You might not need to get up as early as you used to, which means that you may have been getting up later and maybe going to bed later or your sleep pattern has just become disrupted because of, you know, the chaos that has been um, homeschooling and trying to fit around everything else. Um, it can have a negative impact on our sleep, sleep drive. So unless you really need to avoid naps during the day because they do mess up your sleep drive you're having a nap you're deflating that balloon a bit so that by the time you go to bed your sleep drive isn't as strong also if you're not sleepy i suggest don't go to bed when you are sleepy that is important to get into bed and treat your bed as sleeping as a zone for sleeping and sex and that's it no more not not you don't sit in bed and work if you str if you struggle with sleep problems you have to get pretty strict with yourself short term in order to create healthier behaviors that are going to then serve you long term doesn't mean to say you've got to do it forever but it just means while you're getting over these issues um if you're disciplined with yourself your sleep will improve fast and you have to admit sleep has got to be one of the, the most important things for our our, our our stress levels our sanity and, and just feeling healthy um, so do make sure that you're not napping as tempting as that might be. If you're feeling really, really tired, go for a walk outside, do an ex do some exercises, exercise fuels our 
cells it gives us energy it will help you keep going a little bit longer and then you know if you're really exhausted by the end of the day that's when you should get into bed try and make sure you're eating no later than two hours before you go to bed that again will sort of help help improve your chances of managing to get to sleep and also avoid hugely hell um hugely big meals and overly sort of saturated fat meals and heavy meat meals uh within two hours of going to sleep um, on top of that, the I want to sort of talk about our sleep behaviours. So a rut that I got into when I was going through my divorce and also with menopause, um, like I said, I, I got very, very bad hot sweats and it set me up. And I also struggled with anxiety. As a psychotherapist, I understood it was anxiety. I could feel it fizzing. I knew what to do. I did deep breathing exercises. It helped me enormously. I also really focused on distracting myself from negative ruminations with more positive sort of pictures in my head but I I would still wake up and I'd feel that fizz and then I had to react positively to that fizz and, and try and settle it which I did through deep breathing exercises however there's something else that I've recently discovered and it works it's just so simple but it works so well um it's this it's an affirmation it's a really simple affirmation and when I wake up in the early hours I tell myself, I just say it in my head, it's really easy to fall back off to sleep. There is something really calming and soothing about saying that to yourself, because it's almost like you're being the mother telling a child. So you just say it's really easy to fall back off to sleep. I'm lying there, I'm on my pillow, it's all comfortable. It's really easy to fall back off to sleep. And I just focus on saying those words. So that has a two pronged effect. A, it makes you feel comforted and it makes you think, yeah, I, I can go back to sleep. And then it also distracts me from the, the, the sort of crazy thoughts that were going through my head. And those thoughts might not be negative thoughts. It might be, oh, what am I going to do the next day? You know, when I'm working on a big project, I get I get absolutely in the flow. I get very excited about it. And, you know, if I'm waking up, it's just like my brain's already on overdrive. And I'm thinking, oh, should I get up and start it? You know, the, should I just do it? Um, so it doesn't have to be negative, but we do need our sleep. So just try it out and see. I promise you it works so effectively. And the other thing I do, if I wake up at sort of four o'clock, I don't mind getting up at five, but at four, I really don't want to get up at four o'clock. I, I really want to make sure that I've sort of finished my circadian cycle. So, you know, I've, I've, I've had my good, good, good supply of, of, of rotation, you know, my, my sleep cycles. And, um, and if I can manage to sleep a little bit beyond four, then I will try and do so. So what I do with that, I, I don't use that, that affirmation. I actually put on a podcast or I listen. For me, it's easy. I'm single. However, there's nothing to stop you putting earplugs in if you if you've got somebody next to you and just go to bed prepared. So, you know, if you know, if you struggle with waking up in the uh, sort of four o'clock onwards, listen to something that's informative. So if you don't go back off to sleep, you've actually spent it quite productively. But if you it, often I, I'll listen to it for 10 or 15 minutes and then I actually fall off to sleep again and I can stay asleep until, you know, I might wake up at six o'clock then. Sometimes I'll drift in and out, drift in and out, and then I just turn it off, earplugs out, or t turn the phone off, and I go to sleep. And because I've done something, mentally I've done something productive, but I've also distracted myself by listening to something else, rather than ruminating over all those sort of myriad thoughts that are in my brain. It works. You could try an audiobook. If you don't fancy listening to a podcast or a tutorial or a personal development thing, if that's not your, your, your you know, if, if that doesn't light your fire, listen, find an audiobook that you can tune into or even music. But I think when you're listening to a voice, as long as it's not on too loud, it's, it can be quite boring and it helps you just lulls you back off to in, into sleep. And when you can get used to that will help you then build your confidence that you're going to sleep better. Because um, when I was about 18 or 19, I had these violent nightmares. They were just horrendous. And I had them nearly every single night. I, I'd thrown myself out of bed. I'd cut my face open. I'd broken my nose, running into a wall. They were really, really bad nightmares that I used to have. And um, it got to the stage where I was just terrified to go to bed because I didn't know what I was going to do to myself during the night. I, I used to think my bed was going up against the wall and I was l going back down into this dark hole. It was awful, absolutely terrifying. And it was a recurring dream that had a lot. Had a lot. 
and um I don't I didn't I don't know what got me out of that eventually probably hormones again as I grew up and just settled down um but if I'd had that now I'd be taking measures to get me out of that I'm also a hypnotherapist and uh, I've treated people very successfully for night terrors so night terrors are different to nightmares so for instance um you know that some of the people I've I've treated in the past find themselves crouching under a table in a random part of the house clutching a knife and that happens often and you know that is very disconcerting it's very frightening for them it's very frightening for their their household because what what's going to happen um but hypnotherapy works incredibly well um, I actually have got, if you really, really, if you've tried everything, you know, if you've had CBTI, so CBT, cognitive, cognitive behavioral therapy for insomnia, and you're still struggling, do consider hypnosis. I've got a few hypnotherapy screeds that I use. I would need to talk to you specifically about which one would suit you best. Um, but they are incredibly powerful. And um, for people that are really, really struggling, if they've tried all the other things, I do recommend them because it's just something really well it sort of it goes in at the back door and reseeds your your behavioral processes around helps you your subconscious to think more positively around sleep um and it has a really it's very strong effective therapy for things like sleep disorders so if you really are struggling do get in touch with me for, for hypnotherapy but on top of that just understand that there are things that you can do and we do need to get ourselves out of that routine of thinking oh god i've got to go to bed but I'm, i know i'm going to wake up early i know i'm going to be disturbed during the night i'm going to lie there tossing and turning tossing and turning we have to change our internal chatter about it we have to start to think about the fact that bedroom is a warming welcoming place for us that bed and sleep is going to be good for us that we we embrace sleep rather than chase sleep and when you can take it from that angle, it's going to help reduce the stress that you feel around sleep. Because you imagine if, if you're before you get into bed, you're already thinking, oh, I'm never going to sleep well. This is just going to be another typical night. I'm going to wake up. I'm just going to feel lousy again tomorrow. I'm supposed to be seeing so and so tomorrow and I'm not going to have the energy. And, you know, I'm just I just feel awful. When you're saying that to yourself already, you're, you're stimulating your fight and flight system within your body so your adrenaline's already firing off your cortisol your stress hormones are already firing and they're in your cells so already you've shot yourself in the foot because you're stressy before you even get into bed so it is about being aware of of how our thought processes trigger the various hormones in our bodies so that we actually can set ourselves up for the best chance for a good night's sleep so just to summarize Make sure you've got plenty of, of healthy food, dark leafy greens, healthy nuts and seeds, that sort of thing. But I will list those down below. Um, get outside because it's incredibly good for us overall, but also our, our serotonin and our melatonin. Also, make sure you do exercise because that helps to gobble up stress hormones. It also helps us release more serotonin. And it helps to relax us. Um, the affirmation, I find it is, it's really easy to fall asleep get used to saying that write it down if you're not going to remember what it is it doesn't really matter what the words are as long as it's something that you know you can remember and you can say when you wake up and then also consider having a podcast or an audio book ready to go if you wake up in you know latterly you've done the majority of your sleeping but ideally you want another hour or 90 minutes our sleep cycles tend to happen in 90 minutes and you'll spend more time in deep sleep through the earlier sleep cycles than you will in the latter sleep cycles. In the latter sleep cycles, we tend to have more rapid eye movement sleep, which is when we sort of consolidate memories and that's when we do our dreaming. Um, so each sleep cycle has a slightly different component. Um, our healing happens in the deeper sleep cycles, which is good because we tend to get those earlier on throughout the night. Um, and lastly, if you're really struggling with sleep, obviously contact me for hypnosis, but um, all my sleep hygiene book, if you want that, please also just click the link below and that will take you to that. And I've got some really, really good resources that I can share with you that are going to be super, super helpful. Um, but just be aware of your thought processes. Avoid naps during the day. Um, there is so much that we can do to put ourselves back in the driving seat, even when we feel like we've completely lost control. 
a lot of it comes from how you perceive yourself. If you start to see yourself more as somebody who can sleep well, and you embrace sleep, you embrace bed, um, avoid doing other things in bed except for sleep or sex, uh, particularly while you're getting used to this, keep a sleep diary. So note what time you wake up, what time you went to sleep, how did you sleep, what were you, you know, how you felt when you woke up. Um, a sleep diary is quite useful because it helps you to see the improvement in your sleep as you start to incorporate these sorts of ideas that I've mentioned to you and stick to a routine. Now, this is something oh, people are going to hate me saying this. If you are really struggling with your sleep until you've got your sleep nailed, make sure you get up at the same time every single day. That includes bank holidays and vacations and weekends until you've got this sorted. So what, what time do you have to get up in the day normally? If it's five o'clock, you get up at five every single day. Just make sure you go to bed early enough so you, you've got a good sleep. You know, you might need six hours sleep, you might need four hours sleep, you might need eight hours sleep, depending, we all have different needs of sleep. But whatever your, your actual needs are, um, just make sure you're going to bed early enough in order to achieve that. But make sure you get up at the same time every single day. I know it sounds just like the worst thing you probably want to hear right now but it will get you set up for a successful sleep habit. And then when you've nailed your sleeping, it doesn't matter, you can relax it a little bit. So I hope that helps. Um, feel free to contact me if you want either some information on uh, getting hypnosis for sleep, or if you want the resources on sleep that I've got. I've got, an, uh, I've got loads of them, specifically my Healthy Sleeping Habits book. Uh, but if, if you ask me for that, I'll send you um, more resources that are going to help you long term with your sleep too. So um, thank you for watching. And um, yeah, any questions, if you want me to deal with anything specific around menopause, or just health in general, um, send, me your, send me your comments and, uh, and I'll make sure to include them on a future IGTV. Catch you soon.